Good evening. Welcome to Our Savior's Church this evening and online as we remember our beloved dead. Please stand for the entrance antiphon. Just as Jesus died and has risen again, so through Jesus God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. As in it, Adam all died, so also in Christ will all be brought to life. And he will raise you up on eagle's wings. It is a grace that we can gather here on actually on All Souls Day for this Mass of Remembrance. And during this uh, year of the pandemic when uh, a loved one, your family member died, it was uh, probably very trying to get together uh, to remember them, to commemorate them and in prayer and in visitation at the funeral home or uh, the prayer here in the church. And so it's fitting that we would gather together to remember all those who have died uh, from our parish family and even in our gathering here it's still kind of odd isn't it from what we have usually done and so there'll just be the reading of the names and the lighting of the candles up front here uh, and then after mass for you then to come up and to take the candle with you uh, before you leave uh, I know this uh, very personally my own family with my mother's death in August and how kind of trying challenging it was gathering together to pray uh, but knowing that we hold up all the faithful departed in our prayers in this uh, Mass here on All Souls Day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, with your spirit. spirit. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to hear God's word and to be nourished at his altar. Lord Jesus, you bring comfort to the sorrowful. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You offer pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are light for those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who willed that your only begotten Son, having conquered death, should pass over into the realm of heaven. Grant, we pray, to your departed servants that with the mortality of this life overcome, 
they may gaze eternally on you, their creator and redeemer, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Reading from the second book of Maccabees. Judas, the ruler of Israel, took up a collection among all his soldiers, amounting to 2,000 silver drachmas, which he sent to Jerusalem to provide for an expiatory sacrifice. In doing this, he acted in a very excellent and noble way, inasmuch as he had the resurrection of the dead in view. For if he were not expecting the fallen to rise again, it would have been useless and foolish to pray for them in death. But if he did this with a view to the splendid reward which that awaits those who have gone to rest in godliness, it was a holy and pious thought. Thus he made atonement for the dead that they might be freed from this sin. The word of the Lord. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all fall asleep, but all will be changed in an instant, in the blink of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For that which is corruptible must clothe itself with incorruptibility and that which is mortal must clothe itself with immortality. And which, and when this which is corruptible clothes itself with incorruptibility, and that which is corruptible clothes itself with immortality, then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin 
and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us victory through our Lord, Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. With you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the living bread that comes down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this, give, this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, the readings chosen for this evening are often used at a funeral, and you, they may sound familiar if you've been to uh, the Catholic funeral uh, just recently. Uh, and funerals are, are mostly somber gatherings, and I certainly know that firsthand from uh, presiding and preaching at my mom's funeral uh, back in August, and it's pretty tough to, to get through. I uh, had to pull out my handkerchief during the, during the homily and see my family all there right, right in front of me. Um, so it's not necessarily a, t a time for joke telling. Yet with our faith in Christ and in his resurrection, we believe that death is not the end. It's as if we could wink at death, for the devil does not have the final say. So a little levity today is in order. It was a sad, sad, somber day at the home of Oli and Lena, Lena had died, and Oli called the undertaker to tell him about Lena's death, and the undertaker offered his appropriate condolences, and he says, well, Oli, we'll, we'll be right over to pick up the body. And he said, Oli, tell me, tell me again where you live. And Oli says, well, you know, we live out on Anamata Pia Drive. And the undertaker said, okay, can you spell that for me? Is that okay if I drag her over to Oak Street and can you pick her up there? So just what is your attitude toward death? Well, we begin November by honoring the dead with yesterday's Feast of All Saints and today being All Souls Day. It is a good and holy thing that we do today 
And the first reading reminds us that we pray for the dead in hope of the resurrection. In doing so, we are performing a spiritual work of mercy to pray for the living and the dead, today particularly for the dead. While we do pray for the dead today, we remember that death is not the enemy, that God is a God of mercy, and God listens to our prayers and intercessions on behalf of all those who have died. Today is also a reminder that we are responsible for our lives and for the decisions that we make. We are given the opportunity today to contemplate what happens at death, and for us Catholics, this brings to mind purgatory. Having contemplated life after death through the centuries, we have developed a theology that is summed up in a word, purgatory. Many Catholics have trouble with purgatory, and our Protestant friends reject the notion altogether with their emphasis on salvation by faith alone. Unfortunately, through the centuries, we have managed to get it into our heads that purgatory is a place of punishment. This could not be further from the truth. Certainly, it was the sense of justice in the Middle Ages that gave birth to this notion, but it was never really meant for us to conceive uh, purgatory as a place of punishment, you know, just short of the fires of Gehenna and far afield from heaven. No, purgatory is about something God does. We do not die sinless, but we do die redeemed. Salvation is ours if we accept it. Though we hope to be at peace with God before we die, we still have some sins to make up for, some penance that is incomplete. Fortunately, God wants, us, wants to welcome us to himself at home. He desires no separation between us. To make this happen, then we are purified, our sins are purged, thus purgatory. How this works is a mystery, but we know that at the time of death, the grace of Jesus' death and resurrection is offered to us in its fullness. In our encounter with God at death, we will become aware of God's immense goodness and love, and in that moment, we will know immediately how we have failed to live completely in God's image and likeness. It will be like a moment of personal pain, but purgation is God's way of moving us through the mo that moment to the glory Jesus has promised. So take this image, that of the father in the story of the prodigal son, when the son returns. Self-centered, reckless with our lives, unworthy but achingly lonesome, we return to the one who made us. And our Father, longing for our return, welcomes us with open arms and crushes us to himself. And in that awesome embrace, our mangled bodies, our convoluted minds, and our tortured souls are excruciatingly wrenched into perfect conformity with God's love. God does it all. Where do we get the confidence that this can and will happen? Well, St. Paul tells us in the second reading, death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? Where, O oh death, is your victory? Our being conformed to God means being raised, incorruptible, being clothed with immortality. Earthly clothes will not do. Heavenly clothes of immortality are in order. Our bodies will be raised, glorified, to be incorruptible. Well, it is fitting that we gather this day with our prayers around the Eucharistic table. Here we remember and enter into the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross that saves us. We eat and drink the body and blood of Christ so that we can remain in him and he in us. That's what sustains us on our earthly pilgrimage until we come into that promised banquet hall of heaven. 
this holy sacrament sustained our deceased brothers and sisters. Today, we pray that God will, be, will forgive our loved ones their trespasses and take them into his kingdom. Until that time, we take comfort in the knowledge that God is merciful and loving and who wishes us to be with him forever, even if you live on Onomatopoeia Drive. And we pray not just for those whom we love, we pray for all who have gone before us. Our Christian responsibility indeed is to pray for each other, the living and the dead. If you would please stand now as we read the names of, of our beloved dead. Clara Chumley. Thomas Clancy. Rita Cunningham. Dennis Beatles. Lula Mae Bergman. James DeVore Leo Flynn Jenny Gennart Edmund Heyer Sandra Johnson Isabel David Liebisch Joseph Mannix Bob Mansell Mary Ruth McDonald, Deborah Ann O'Connell, Tracy Orr, Helen Doolin Paul. Evelyn Ring Concepcion Aureliano Rivera Anna Shaw Mary Jo Sherman John J. Sorrells, Victoria Nicole Spradlin, Sue Stevens, Catherine Timmons,
Mary Frances Tobin. Russell Volk. Mary Margaret Watkins. Colleen White. Danny White. For all those who have died from the COVID pandemic. We who are baptized into Christ share in his death and resurrection with faith and hope in eternal life we offer these prayers. For the clergy and religious of our church, may they be inspired by the Holy Spirit as they work to spread God's word, leading us to the fullness of everlasting life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Those who serve in the military, protecting our great land from harm and danger, especially those who have lost their lives in the pursuit of freedom, may they always be enriched by the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As family and friends come together to remember our loved ones, Lord, wrap your loving arms around us and comfort us in our sorrow as we face the days ahead. May we continue to be nourished by your love and mercy today and always. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and dying, help them, we pray, to find faith, hope, and love through your abundant grace and unfailing love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those, for all who serve families at the time of death, those who work in hospice, hospitals, funeral homes, and grief support groups, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the deceased who have been called from life this past year, especially Clara Chumley and those we remember here tonight and those who have lost their lives to COVID-19. May they rest in the peace and love of our Lord Jesus Christ and enjoy the fullness of everlasting life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, look kindly upon the people who long to see your face and grant these petitions that we ask through Christ our Lord.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the of the Church. Receive, Lord, in your kindness the sacrificial offering we make for all your servants who sleep in Christ, that set free from the bonds of death by this singular sacrifice, they may merit eternal life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection is dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the host and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. are indeed holy O Lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your Son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your son our lord jesus christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries for on the night he was betrayed he himself took bread and giving you thanks he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, 
in recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, and may, be, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all of the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all of the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Thomas John, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember all your servants, the faithful departed, that you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform their lowly bodies into the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Longing for the coming of God's kingdom, let us pray the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. To the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. May offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my room, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Through these sacrificial gifts, which we have received, O Lord, bestow on your departed servants your great mercy, and to those who have, you have endowed with the grace of baptism, grant also the fullness of eternal joy through Christ our Lord. At the uh, conclusion of Mass, after the final blessing and dismissal and before the final song, uh, we will have our uh, election novena. So novena is the nine days of prayer. We're at day eight uh, in this prayer. Uh, you may have that on your parish app, the prayer intention for today. Uh, if not, I'll lead that here at the, at the uh, chair. And then we say the Our Father, the Hail Mary, and the Glory Be. Then after Mass is over, family members are invited to come up social distancing of course <laughs> to take your uh, candle here to extinguish that and to take that home and relight it in memory of your uh, beloved who has uh, gone before us the lord be with you may almighty god bless you the father the son and the holy spirit we go forth in the peace of christ Thanks to our prayer for the novena may we keep in mind the gift of religious freedom and our duty to defend and exercise it as faithful citizens. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Mercy. 